DGA had no right to take his name off the award? Can a director not make a film? I mean, he did not make it to... So he made it. And it caused what it did. Still, no one takes into consideration anything else this man has done, and do they care? How do you defend him? Well, here's a curious example. Uh, take John Ford, for example. In Judge Priest with uh, Will Rogers, uh, Step and Fetch It is in it. And if you want to talk about a demeaning role, role I mean, he's lazy, he, he talks very slowly, and he scratches the back of his neck by putting his arm over like this and that, and he doesn't want to wear his shoes out, so he has them hanging on around his neck. Uh, and uh, he's already stolen the vest from uh, Will Rogers and a few other things. So that, in a sense, is not a positive image of a black fellow, and yet, on the other hand, it's, uh, it's amusing. And then suddenly you get to Sergeant Rutledge, directed by John Ford, and now the black is the real hero of the film. So he did a complete reversal from 1934 until, I don't remember the year for, for Rutledge. So he had the opportunity of, of cleaning up his image. Griffith really didn't, uh, didn't have that. But uh, the other people, uh, idiots. Oh, Griffith was so racist he wouldn't use real blacks in his films and he had blackface. Well, blackface is in a lot of films at the time. Made it, the Tom Mix films, uh, um, the guy was, got blackface on all the way through uh, for quite late. That's in there. Yeah, but why and and that was not characteristic. It was not characteristic to have a black actor relate in any personal way of even touching in a movie. You could possibly have a black boot black, but not somebody like shake your hands or anything like that. No way will that be allowed in an American film. And not touching a white woman. Oh my heavens, certainly not. Certainly not. But he has, they're all different looks of blacks in this movie, in blackface. Some have white lips, some have too dark a skin. They look they don't look real at times. It was it an art? F I mean, well, I know. I, uh, generally, they're not too. Are they stereotype minstrel type performances? I don't think so. I don't think so. Certainly, the villain uh, Silas Lynch is no minstrel type. Uh, the, the guy, the guy are. who tries to attack uh, May Marsh, the little sister, is is. Uh, just a, a black guy who, uh, who decides that uh, he deserves a white woman. I'm now your equal. But, the, but don't you supposed to date, ask the person if you want to get together? If you don't want me, I'm just going to grab you. I mean, it's basically what the black comes across in The Birth of a Nation. Or, or well, wait, wait, you mean Silas Lynch does? Both. Well, the other one doesn't grab. He says, I want to marry you. The implication is... Certainly that he's going to rape her. But That's the implication. But we don't see it. And she preserves her virtue as in the book by jumping off the cliff. <laughs> to protect her honor. Not as a consequence of having lost it. But to protect it. So there was no rape. But still, it's like there, these, these black guys... These Negroes just feel like can go up to a white woman and say, "I want you," and you have to. Ha I have to. You have. To, I want you. When she says no, you still want her. Here he grabs it, a lily and drags her into the other room. Well, that's the other one. That's the other one. We're not, we're talking about the one with May Marsh now. That was the one that caused the most trouble when she jumps off the cliff. Then you, hey, you got this crazy guy from um, England in his book who said that the little colonel. It really uh, uh, has incestuous desires on his sister. Now, poor Griffith, now, now he's accused of being incestuous. I mean, there's nothing that they will not accuse this person of. Let's get over how many? How long did it take to make The Birth of a Nation? <laughs> I would give you... How long is it? <laughs> well, he started... Um, 
he started uh, preliminary filming, certainly rehearsing costumes and things like that, and certain scenes already in May 1914. I think he did some shooting in June that's in the film. They always say that it began shooting on July 4th, which I don't believe in any possible way. July 4th was a big holiday, even more so in 1914 than today, and it was also on a Saturday. So I doubt that would be a rather stupid day to begin. I would, But I think it sounded patriotic, and that's why they used July 4th. When he you know, asked, I mean, that's all. Uh, and I, I, What is the source of that date? I mean, it's just somebody thought it was a good idea. The, there's so much mythology involved in all of this. You, 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 you never know. Well, of uh, all the mythology, how many extras to shoot these scenes? Not as many as it said. I don't think I ever counted more than maybe 60 or 70 horses, if that many. And they say, you know, 500 horses and you know, all this stuff. But it all sounds good. It all sounds good. You look at those, pan those that panorama shot of the battlefield. It looks like there are more than 500 people. But if people think what? there are thousands, but there weren't. Well, the only way to do that is to take a, a, as good a, a, a still as you can find and count them. Because if you're good, you can make... Uh, a few people look like a heck of a lot if you place them strategically. Uh, you don't need 500 people necessarily if you place them right. If they're all, some of them are in a line or in a waving line, that always looks like much. You've got smoke coming in, you've got movement. Uh, I don't know whether people are really counting. Uh, um, all these figures are exaggerated. I mean, some of those ads right in the beginning with, with the birth of a nation, it, was, it cost $500,000. Well, we know it cost one hundred and ten. So that was an exaggeration by five. So the intolerance cost um, 400 and some thousand. And then later on, uh, Griffith's publicity staff came out with a breakdown that it cost two million. And other people picked that figure up. It did not cost too many. It cost about 400 and some thousand dollars. So exaggerate again. And even Griffith said what it, roughly what he said in one interview, um, the Babylon cost about 100,000. Then later on, of course, it gets exaggerated. 